Three weeks ago, a trove of confidential NASA intercept mission data was leaked. 24 gigabytes pulled from NASA servers in the dead of night by a hacker group known as Event Horizon. Inside, files stamped 3i slash Atlas, the third interstellar visitor ever tracked, and proof that something about this object has NASA reeling. July 18th, 2025, the mission logs show a sudden sideways acceleration, like a comet ignoring the laws of physics. And buried deeper, disturbing records hint at metallic seams, unexplained bursts of heat, and a mission patch never meant for public eyes. Why would NASA hide what it found? What happened during the intercept could change everything we know about visitors from beyond, if the world is ready to see. Event Horizon didn't just stumble onto NASA's servers, they tore through them. In the early hours of September 2nd, 25, a coordinated cyber attack bypassed two layers of agency firewalls, exploiting a vulnerability in an outdated mission planning module. Security logs later showed a spike in outbound traffic, 24 gigabytes of compressed files siphoned out in under seven minutes. The attackers left no signature, only a silent gap in the audit trail. Within hours, a manifesto appeared on encrypted forums. Event Horizon claimed responsibility, calling the breach a response to what they called unlawful cosmic secrecy. Their post didn't just boast about access. It warned that the files contained material so sensitive, even senior NASA directors were kept in the dark. The language was blunt. The world deserves to know what its own scientists have found. Forensic analysts pieced together the timeline. The attackers gained initial access at 3.14 a.m. Eastern, escalated privileges by 3.19, and began exfiltrating data at 3.23. By 3.30, the connection was gone. In that short window, they copied internal chat logs, draft reports, intercepted mission telemetry, and files labeled with the 3i slash Atlas designation, some marked as confidential, others as top secret. NASA's internal alert system triggered a lockdown, but too late. The breach was complete before most staff logged in for the day. In the days that followed, Event Horizon distributed blurred screenshots and redacted memos to journalists and YouTube channels known for covering classified science. No one received the full archive, just enough to hint at the scale and gravity of what had been taken. The leak didn't just expose raw data, it exposed a fault line. Who controls the story when discoveries threaten to upend what we think we know? Event Horizon's warning landed like a gauntlet. The files, they said, contained evidence that would force the public to confront a new reality. And with that, the countdown to disclosure had begun. Screenshots flooded encrypted channels before sunrise. The files are stamped confidential, in bold block letters, some with redacted blocks so thick the underlying text barely bleeds through. Metadata tags at the top edge show a 0314 UTC timestamp, matching the breach window logged in NASA's own security audit. Mission patch artwork appears in the corner, a stylized comet streaking past a blue NASA vector, flanked by the code 3i slash Atlas dash int. Every document carries a unique identifier, ticket numbers, routing codes, and internal chat handles, layered over technical diagrams and draft tables. One memo, partially blurred, lists the object's trajectory. Hyperbolic, V sub INF equals 26.1 kilometers per second, E equals 6.2. The next page is a status log from the intercept team, lines of text blacked out except for a single phrase. Plume anomaly flagged at plus 11.3 seconds. Another screenshot shows a spreadsheet of spectrometry results, columns labeled CO2, H2O, Ni, Fa, some cells highlighted in yellow, others struck through. At the bottom, a warning. Distribution restricted, eyes only. A redacted incident report flashes the words access level, TS, slash 8CI, and a digital signature string ending in dash JPL. The file properties panel, briefly visible in the leak, reveals a creation date of August 28, 2025, hours after the intercept attempt. Embedded in the file's metadata, a string of initials matches those of a senior project engineer later suspended from mission access. The visual language is unmistakable. These are not public press releases or sanitized mission updates. Even the formatting betrays their origin. Courier font headers, NASA's internal watermark, 
and a footer referencing the Deep Space Network. Some screenshots show the classic blue and white NASA email interface, with subject lines like Atlas Intercept, Immediate Action Required, and Telemetry Review, Anomaly Detected. No single document tells the story, but taken together, the artifacts leave little doubt. These are internal files, never meant for public eyes. Their authenticity signaled in every detail from timestamp to mission patch. And while the contents are heavily censored, the presence of classified headers, technical jargon, and urgent tone confirm the leak isn't rumor, it's real. The question isn't whether the files exist, it's what they reveal about 3i slash Atlas, and why so many lines remain blacked out. On July 1st, 25, the Atlas survey in Hawaii logged a new object tearing into the solar system at 130,000 miles per hour. Astronomers at the control desk flagged the track immediately. This was no ordinary comet. The object, soon labeled 3i slash Atlas, measured an estimated 26 kilometers across. That's Manhattan, edge to edge, moving faster than any asteroid or comet ever observed inside the orbit of Jupiter. Its orbit told the next part of the story. Calculations from the Minor Planet Center revealed an eccentricity over six. In orbital mechanics, that means it isn't just passing by. It's not coming back. The path is hyperbolic, a one-way ticket from deep interstellar space. For context, most comets from the Oort cloud barely reach an eccentricity of one. Three, I slash Atlas was moving too fast, on too straight a line, for any solar system object to have launched it. Within hours, observatories from Chile to Arizona confirm the numbers. The object's incoming speed, over 58 kilometers per second, defied the solar system's gravitational grip. Veteran survey scientist Dr. Lena Takahashi described the moment. The track was so steep the software flagged it as an error. We had to double check the data by hand. Trajectory plots showed a near-perfect inbound shot, slicing across the ecliptic at a shallow angle. The approach vector pointed back toward the constellation Lyra, far from the plane where most solar system debris drifts. Even the inclination, just five degrees off Earth's orbital path, hinted at a cosmic coincidence, or something more deliberate. The size alone would have made headlines, but paired with that velocity and trajectory, the object forced astronomers to rethink their playbook. Three, I slash Atlas was not just another icy visitor. Its motion, speed, and origin all screamed interstellar, an outsider with unknown intentions. As the days ticked by, telescopy arrays tracked the object's acceleration. Early models tried to fit its path to natural forces, gravity, solar radiation, cometary outgassing. Nothing matched. The numbers kept pointing to a single, unsettling conclusion. 3i slash Atlas wasn't behaving like any comet on record. The groundwork was laid for the next mystery. What was happening on its surface? And why did the data hint at something even stranger beneath the ice? The first leaked images from the intercept mission landed like a punch, blurred at the edges, but sharp enough in the center to ignite a storm. 3i slash Atlas's surface didn't resemble any comet on file. Imaging analysts, working from the raw frames, flagged a pattern that stood out even before any color correction. Bands of smooth, almost metallic-looking plating, broken by lines that ran too straight, too evenly spaced to pass for fractures or natural layering. In the highest contrast shots, uh, seams crisscross the visible hemisphere. Not the ragged fissures of a fractured rock, but ribbed lines, running parallel for kilometers with branching right angles that defied the chaotic geometry of ice and dust. One analyst, quoted in a redacted internal chat, called it the radiator problem, referring to a gridwork of raised ridges, spaced like the cooling fins on spacecraft heat sinks. Those ribs cast shadows at dawn and dusk, their regularity so striking that the software's anomaly detector flagged the pattern as artificial. Comparisons to known comet nuclei fell apart under scrutiny. Halley's Comet, Temple One, even Borisov, all show surfaces pitted, jagged, and randomly variegated. Here, the reflectance profile ran flat and bright across long stretches, interrupted by what looked like panel boundaries. The surface didn't scatter sunlight in the usual way. Instead, it bounced back in a pattern closer to polished alloy than to porous rock. One frame, rotated and contrast-boosted, revealed a diamond-shaped plate, 
its edge bordered by a shallow groove. Too clean for any natural fracture, too sharp for a dust deposit. Thermal imaging added another layer. Infrared overlays showed heat pooling along the ribbed seams, then venting in pulses from regularly spaced nodes. The effect was so pronounced that a senior analyst, in a comment now circulating online, wrote, If this is a comet, it's wearing armor. Skeptics in the review room ran the numbers, searching for a natural explanation. Crystalline ice, unusual layering, even the possibility of a coincidental impact grid. None fit. The geometry was too precise, the symmetry too persistent across multiple rotation angles. Each new image forced the team to widen the search for analogs, but the catalog of known comet surfaces offered nothing close. As the debate spilled beyond closed channels, outside experts began weighing in. Some urged caution, warning against over-interpreting noisy data or digital artifacts. But the regularity of the patterns, the flatness of the panels, and the radiator-like ribs kept the question alive. What kind of natural process could sculpt an object this size into something that looked, at times, built? With every new frame, the case for a purely natural surface grew thinner. The focus shifted from the object's impossible motion to the possibility that its skin, smooth, ribbed, and heat venting, told a story no comet ever had. Martin Cordner's team at Goddard was the first to get a full infrared spectrum of 3i slash Atlas after the intercept. Their logs show 42 gigabytes of raw data, sealed within hours under a restricted access embargo. The early spectra lit up with nickel lines, sharp, isolated, and far brighter than any comet on record. For context, nickel usually rides shotgun with iron in cosmic dust. Here, iron was almost absent, its signature lines missing from every frame. That's not just rare. In the catalog of known comets, it's essentially unique. The next anomaly came from the thermal data. The Webb Telescope's infrared array recorded heat vents pulsing every 90 seconds, like a heartbeat. The cadence was so regular that Cordoner's analysts flagged it as non-random. Heat pooled along the ribbed seams, then burst outward in tight, directed jets, not the broad, chaotic outgassing seen in typical comets. These were discrete, timed pulses, each matching a spike in the object's surface temperature. The logs call it a directive motion event, a term usually reserved for spacecraft thrusters. Trajectory analysts in the flight room tracked the object's path through the inner solar system. After each thermal pulse, the intercept team logged a subtle course correction, small but precise, and always in the direction needed to maintain the hyperbolic escape. Gravity alone can't account for these adjustments. Solar radiation pressure is steady, not pulsed. Outgassing from ice would scatter in all directions, not produce the tight, sunward jets seen here. Cordoner's group kept the findings close, circulating only short summaries to mission leads. The raw data, Nickel without iron, heat pulses on a clock, and course changes tied to those bursts remained locked behind internal firewalls. To the handful of analysts with access, the evidence was stacking up. 3i slash Atlas was not just behaving strangely, it was following a plan. Avi Loeb, the Harvard astrophysicist who once staked his reputation on Oumuamua, wasted no time weighing in on the 3i slash Atlas files. The intercepted telemetry, he argued, read like a blueprint for propulsion. Each heat pulse, each course correction, lined up with what you would expect from a ship using ion drives, engines that push against the void not with fire, but with electric fields and charged dust. In Loeb's words, if you wanted to slow down after a journey between stars, you would fire your engines sunward at perihelion. That's exactly what Atlas did. But propulsion wasn't the only anomaly buried in the leaked logs. Radio astronomers reviewing the intercept mission's raw data flagged something that shouldn't have been there, a pattern of faint, repeating echoes, bouncing back from the object at regular intervals. Not a natural radio burst, not cosmic static. These were precise, clipped signals, echoing at intervals that mapped almost perfectly to the timing of the object's thermal pulses. Veteran telemetry specialist Marissa Singh in a chat log later leaked by Event Horizon, wrote, it's like someone is pinging the probe and it's answering. The pattern is too tight for random noise. The most jarring evidence came from a fragment recovered by the interceptor's dust collector. Lab results circulated in an internal memo described a fleck of material smaller than a grain of sand, yet structured in a way that defied easy explanation. Under electron microscopy, 
technicians saw a lattice of silicon and doped traces of phosphorus, arranged in layers, spaced at micron intervals, like the architecture of a semiconductor wafer. No known comet dust, no interstellar grain, matches that pattern. The memo summary line, partially redacted but still legible, read, semiconductor structure detected. Artificial origin cannot be excluded. For the analysts in the review room, the equation had changed. It wasn't just a question of odd chemistry or strange motion. The files, the echoes, the circuit dust, all pointed to the same disturbing possibility. 3i slash Atlas might not be a comet at all. It could be a relic, a probe, or something built for a purpose we're only beginning to guess. In September 25, 24 gigabytes of NASA intercept mission data on 3i slash Atlas appeared online, with timestamps and classified headers confirming the authenticity of the leak. The files revealed a 26-kilometer object, moving at 130,000 miles per hour, that suddenly changed course, an anomaly no known natural process could explain. High-resolution images showed smooth metallic panels and ribbed seams, unlike any comet previously observed. Spectroscopy data pointed to refined nickel with almost no iron and rhythmic 90-second heat pulses synchronized with unexplained trajectory corrections. The most disturbing evidence came from radio echo logs and silicon fragments matching patterns found in engineered circuits. Yet, critical details remain redacted. The object's true purpose, origin, and whether similar encounters have gone unreported are still unknown. What is clear? 3i slash Atlas challenges every assumption about interstellar visitors. The scientific community now faces new questions about our place in the cosmos and the limits of what we know. For now, the evidence forces us to reconsider what passes through our skies and what or who might send it.